हेलो एवरीवन सो वी विल कंटिन्यू विद चैप्टर नंबर टेन दैट इज ग्रोथ ऑफ न्यू इंडिया रिलीजियस एंड सोशल रिफॉर्म आफ्टर 1858 वी आर ऑन पेज नंबर 183 एंड वी विल स्टार्ट विद द टॉपिक ऑफ इमेंसिपेशन ऑफ वुमेन फॉर काउंटलेस सेंचुरीज वुमेन इन इंडिया हैव बीन सबॉर्डिनेटेड टू मेन एंड सोशली ऑपरेस्ड द वेरियस रिलीजियस प्रैक्टिस इन इंडिया एज वेल एज द पर्सनल लॉस बेस्ड ऑन देम consigned women to a status inferior to that of men the condition of upper class women in this respect worse than that of peasant women since the latter worked actively in fields alongside men they enjoyed relatively greater freedom of movement and in some respects better status in the family than the upper class women for example the seldom observed parda and many of them had the right to remarry the traditional view often praised the role of women as wives and mothers but as individuals they were assigned a very lowly class position they were supposed to have no personality of their own apart from their ties to their husbands they could not find any other expression to their inborn talents or desires except as housewives in fact they were seen just as just adjuncts to men for example a woman could only marry once among hindus a man was permitted to have more than one wife among muslims too this custom of polygamy prevailed in large parts of the country women had to live behind the parda the custom of early marriage prevailed and even children of 8 or 9 were married widows could not remarry and had to lend an ascetic and restricted life in many parts of the country the horrifying custom of sati or self immolation of widows prevailed hindu women had no right to inherit property nor did they enjoy the right to terminate an undesirable marriage muslim women could inherit property but only half as much as a man could and in the matter of divorce even theoretically there was no equality between husband and wife in fact muslim women dreaded divorce the social position of hindu and muslim women as well as their values were similar moreover in both cases they were economically and socially totally dependent on men lastly the benefit of education was denied to most of them in addition women were taught to accept their subjugation and even to welcome it as a badge of honor it is true that occasionally women of the character and personality of razia sultana chand bibi or ahilya bai holkar arose in india but they were exceptions to the general pattern and do not in any way change the picture moved by the humanitarianism and egalitarian impulses of the 19th century the social reformers started a powerful movement to improve the position of women while some informers reformers appealed to the doctrines of individualism and equality others declared that hinduism that true hinduism or islam or zoroastrianism did not sanction the inferior status of women and that true religion assigned to them a high social position numerous individuals reform societies and religious organizations worked hard to spread education among women to encourage widow remarriage to improve the living condition of widows to prevent marriage of young children to bring women out of parda to enforce monogamy and to enable middle class women to take a professions or public employment after 1880s when the dufferin hospitals named after lady dufferin the wife of the voice roy were started efforts to made efforts were made to make modern medicine and child delivery techniques available to indian women the movement for liberation of women received great stimulus from the rise of militant national movement in the 20th century women played an active role and important role in the struggle for freedom they participated in large numbers in the agitation against the partition of bengal and the home rule movement after 1918 they marched in political processions picketed shops selling foreign cloth liquor spun propagated spun and propagated khadi went to jail in the non cooperation movements faced lathis tear gas and bullets during public demonstrations participated actively in the revolutionary terrorist movement had voted in elections to legislatures and even stood as candidates 
Saroji Naidu, the famous poetess, became the president of National Congress. Several women became ministers or parliamentary secretaries in the popular ministries in of 1937. Hundreds of them, hundreds of them became members of municipalities and other organs of the local government. When the trade union and the Kisan movements arose in 1920s, women were often found in their forefront. Moreover, more than any factor, participation in the national movement contributed to the awakening of Indian women and their emancipation. For how could those who had braved British jails and bullets be declared inferior? And how could they any longer be confined to the home and be satisfied with the life of a doll or a slave girl? They were bound to assert their rights as human beings. Another important development was the birth of women's movement in the country. Up to 1920s, enlightened men had worked to uplift for women. Now aware and self-confident women undertook the task. They started many organizations and institutions for the purpose. The most outstanding of which was the All India Women's Conference founded in 1927. Women's struggles for equality took a big step forward with the coming of independence. Article 14 and 15 of the Indian Constitution in 1950s guaranteed the complete equality of men and women. The Hindu Succession Act of 1956 made the daughter as equal co here with the son. The Hindu Marriage Act of 1955 permitted dissolution of marriage on specific grounds. Monogamy was also made mandatory on men as well as on women. But the evil custom of dowry still continues even though the demanding of dowry has been banned. The constitution gives women equal right to work and to get employment in state agencies. The directive principles of the constitution laid down the principle of equal pay for equal work for both men and women. Of course, many visible and invisible obstacles still remain putting the principle of equality of sexes into practice. A proper social climate has still to be created. But the social reform movements, the freedom struggle, women's own movement, women's own movement and the constitution of free India have made a big contribution in this direction. Thank you for tuning in. Next time we will be starting with the theme or the topic that is struggle against caste thank you everyone for tuning in and all the best for your exams